Hey folks, Dan here from SpeedShop TV, and we've got our Engage, we've loaded our software onto it, our calibrations. Uh, as you saw a little earlier on the uh, screenshots there, we showed you exactly how to save the files. That's exactly what you're going to do, is click File, Export To, and then to Emotion, and that'll allow you to put it on the card and get up on your Engage. So we've got our four calibrations on here now. We've showed three on the screen, we've basically got four. We've got a 93 octane tune, uh, 110 octane, 116, and our E85. And of course, we love to be able to take this car, use whatever fuel we like. Obviously, we have different setups for road racing versus drag racing. Road racing, we learn a little bit richer to make sure that, you know, we've got plenty of fuel in there that the engine's going to last. Drag racing, we can run a little bit leaner, get a little more horsepower. We're not hurting the engine because we're not going for great lengths of time. At any rate, what we're going to do now is show you how to upload the stock calibration from the car onto the Engage to make sure that it's saved into the stock file folder. And then what we're going to do is take the E85 calibration and download it into the car. So you'll see how quick and easy this is. It's actually very quick, uh, as quick as your HP Tuner software. And uh, like I say, I think you'll like it. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Now, what we're going to do is show you how the Engage works. Basically, power up the system. You'll see it's all got its boot screen. And we'll then open up to the main screen, which, of course, will give you the gauges, tuning, and diagnostics options. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to assume this is brand new, which actually it is. We're going to select tuning. And what we're going to do, so once we've selected tuning, you'll see you get your screen, vehicle info, load tune, status, etc. Now, as you scroll down, you'll get down to load stock and read vehicle. Now, what we are going to do is select read vehicle. It'll tell you that it's for GM E38. And we're going to click the check mark because we want to read this vehicle. And it'll tell you, turn the key on, but do not start the engine. So again, key on, engine off, and it will go ahead. And now what it'll do is initialize communications. Now, one thing that we want to point out here, and you'll see in a second, you're going to get a warning screen that will tell you not to interrupt the cable. Now, one of the things that you want to keep in mind is when you're flashing a vehicle with a calibration, regardless whether you're using, you know, the Engage or, of course, HP Tuner software, or the factory's own TIS system, what you never want to do is futz with the cable while you're programming. And of course, with the vehicle, you want to make sure that you've got the battery fully topped up, that it's at a full state of charge. You don't want to have any other parasitic electrical draws to make sure that the battery stays topped up while the tuning process is going on, the calibration download. The other thing that I want to point out while we got a second here is that when it comes to battery chargers, you'll see even in some of General Motors literature, their service literature, that it's okay to have a battery charger hooked up. The one thing that you have to understand about that is that they're referring to battery chargers that are the old school style analog chargers that are not switching power supply. 99% of the chargers, I don't know what the exact number is, but definitely the majority of battery chargers on the market today are digital switching power supplies. And those, they don't produce a steady voltage there's a voltage that oscillates. It's a digitally oscillating voltage. So it'll basically, you know, transition up and down past, let's say if you're taking, you know, 14 and a half volts to charge the battery, it's actually going to swing up and down above and below that mark. You don't want something like that going on in your vehicle's electrical system while you're trying to flash a calibration to the car. Doesn't matter what system you're trying to calibrate, whether it's the ECM, body control, whichever. So best advice is to keep chargers off the vehicle altogether. Now, coming back to the actual uh, read here that's going on with the Engage, you see how quickly this thing's motoring along. It's saving the vehicle calibration. You see it's just about done. So it's a very quick process. It's as quick as, obviously, your HP Tuner software or whatever you're using here. So once it saves it, it'll tell you, don't shut the vehicle off. Don't unplug the tuner. It resets the PCM, make sure it squares everything away. Once that's done, now it tells you that it saved the stock file as stockfile.stk in the stock file folder of the memory card. So we're just going to click the check mark. Now we go back to the screen, which is still the tuning screen. We can go back to our main screen if we want. You still have the main screen there, but we're not done. What we want to do is install one of our custom tunes. So we're going to click load tune. Now you see it comes up right away with E85. Our different tunes, our different calibrations are in here. We've got the 116, the 110, the 93, and of course back to our 85. Now this is the one that we want, so we select it. It'll prompt you, do you want to flash this tune? Yes, we do. So now it goes ahead and loads it. It tells you this will take approximately four minutes, which, you know, it's usually quicker than that. So we're okay with this. Click our little check mark. 
off it goes. So simple and straightforward. Now as a quick note, when you first get this tool, the Engage, it may, at this particular point, reload a stock calibration and save it specific to the VIN name. And this is fine, this just means you've got one more load session, but again, may not happen, um, often it does. It's not a big deal, it just takes a minute, it'll upload it, it'll check to make sure that the calibration you're installing in the vehicle is exactly the same as what's coming out as so far as the seed key information, the operating system and so forth. Basically it makes sure that you don't program your vehicle with a calibration that shouldn't be in it, something that's not compatible. So in this case we're obviously good to go. You see how quickly this thing's flying along. I can't even get this information out verbally by the time this thing puts everything in there. So I'm pretty impressed with this stuff, it's neat. So great little tool to have, like I say, it keeps you from carrying around your, you know, laptop and cables and stuff. If you want to go to the track, be able to select different calibrations for different race purposes or fueling. So works out pretty well. Verifies the transfer, resets the ECM, you're good to go. At this point, it'll tell you again, you know, make sure that you shut the engine off or ignition rather, keep it off for 10 seconds, let everything fully reset, then you're ready to start the vehicle. We know this, we click the check mark, we're back, we're good to go. Now, if we want to go back to our gauges, we can do exactly that. Connect. And basically, that's what it'll do is, again, tell you connecting to the vehicle, make sure the key's on. Simple's pretty easy. And there are your gauges. In this case, we have a six pack up, pack up there. Now, you see we've got ECT up there twice. Once you click your little gauges, you'll see that you'll have a screen where you can choose signal. Signal is basically the channel or the parameter that you want to look at. So that could be air charge temperature, coolant temp, you know, you can flip through there. When you click on it, you can scroll through and you'll see any number of parameters. I think in this case, there's something like 80 or so parameters available on this particular platform, on the E38 specifically for 2013 Corvette Z06. So you can pick all these different parameters, whichever one you want to display. I like to keep coolant temperature, knock, etc., like engine knock, obviously for ignition. So you could choose what you like. Very simple, very straightforward. So. Not a bad little unit. So there you have it, folks. Uh, plug this thing in. You saw how quick it was to upload the stock calibration, download our E85 calibration. Of course, we could download any one of these tunes that we want into this car. See, it just takes a few minutes, not even. So very handy little gauge. And like I say, works great for data logging. With the size of the memory card that's in here, you could literally run for hundreds and hundreds of laps, not even come close to touching the memory capacity of this card. So there's no need to upgrade what comes with it. So again, you know, quick, easy, simple to use. Can't ask for more than that. If you want one, you can grab one at ferrarospeed.com. Give them, a, you know, give them a shout. Get one of these things ordered out. You, you certainly won't regret it. I love it because of the fact that if we have one of our guys using the HP Tuner software, another guy using our second system, we still have this to be able to take to the track. It's always nice to have something that's redundant. You know, the saying goes, two is one, one is none. So if you've got one of these things, you know, sitting in your car, you've got that extra level of redundancy and of course the convenience. So definitely a great little, you know, great little tool to have. Perfect for checking your data log in the car, monitoring the gauges and of course tuning. So yeah, we give this thing a thumbs up. We tried on that GT, uh, the Boss 302 rather, a little while ago that we had the Lime Green Boss 302. Loved it for that. It clearly works just as well for the GM platform. So if you got a GM car, this is your answer. All right guys, thanks again. Dan for Speed Shop TV. We'll see you soon.